We all love cats and dogs and birds and all the fun little animals that we see in our daily life, but what about the ones in the world that are hidden in the far corners? The animals that you could hardly even begin to imagine. Well, fortunately for you, you don't have to imagine any longer. We've got a perfect list, from moths that look like fairies to purple blobby frogs. Here are 15 unique animals you won't believe exist. Number 15. Tarsiers. Now, not only is this little guy on our list of the 15 weirdest animals in the world, it's definitely on my top 15 of the cutest in my heart. Just look at those big ol' eyes. They make them look so dopey. And in fact, each one of their eyeballs actually weighs more than their brain. So they aren't really dumb or anything, their eyes are just that big. You can usually find one of these little guys in parts of Southeast Asia, though fossil records actually show that way back in the day, they could be found all over the world. They are also very shy and timid, so scientists have had a pretty hard time collecting a solid amount of data about them. However, one thing that they can conclude is that the distinctive big old eyeballs that they have are so they can see more clearly at night. While the Tarsier tends to be a very solitary animal, researchers have witnessed different types of Tarsiers actually banding together, especially during mating season. But don't worry, little guy, I'm shy as well. Maybe someday, if by chance, our paths will cross in the wild. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. The Snub-Nosed Monkey Now not only is this monkey called a snub-nosed monkey because, to be honest, it looks like it's missing its nose, but it's also been referred to as the sneezing monkey. The reason for this nickname is a pretty adorable one. They're really easy to find in the forest during a hard rain or a storm. According to locals that are even able to find this scarce monkey, it's because as it rains, what climbs into the monkey's turned up nose causes them to sneeze. So it may be very cute, but it's not actually great for them because predators can hear them and find them much quicker. It's critically endangered as an animal species and is usually found in the forests of Myanmar and in southern parts of China. With only about 300 of the little sneezers left in the wild, there have been many conservation projects launched to try and help them out. For the moment though, they're still very much endangered, and those involved in conserving them are optimistic that the sneezing monkey will make a turnaround in its population size. Number 13. The Purple Frog Ew, and also, ew. This frog looks like a blob took a poop and then that poop sprouted legs and then it became a frog again. It's still pretty trippy though. This purple frog, also known as the pig frog, lives out most of its life burrowed underground. But during the monsoon season, these blubbery looking blobby things come out to mate and eat. And that's about it. Because they spend so much time underground, this is another species of animal that's very difficult for researchers to study. What they do know is that they live mostly near the coasts of India, weighing more or less 165 grams. And that's surprising, because these little chubby guys look pretty big to me. The lack of research also means that it's difficult to get even a rough estimate of how many purple frogs still remain in the wild, though regardless, the frog is still very much in danger of becoming extinct because of the rapid deforestation that's taking place in its natural habitat. Come on guys, if you don't want to stop to save the earth, at least do it for these little purple blobs. Number 12. Goblin Sharks Oh my gosh, this shark is freaky. These things can actually grow to be 12 and a half feet long as well. Maybe they don't even need to bite their prey. They can just sneak up behind them and scare them to death. 
That would be pretty efficient of a way to hunt, actually, though its sharp teeth that jet out of its mouth in a weird way probably help as well. But actually, those sharp teeth that they have are not necessarily made for just biting into things. They're mostly used as a kind of trap for the goblin shark. So instead of coming in hot and chomping down to kill, they trap and then swallow. The jaw actually protrudes out so much that it really does look like the shark's trying to escape from its own face. These mouths are so effing large, because in the dark depths where they come from, food is scarce. And as such, they have a pretty crappy time trying to find stuff in the dark. In order to compensate, they have these huge mouths that can just vacuum up whatever they find in order to sustain themselves. Now I just feel kind of bad for these freaked out sharks. Too bad they have a face that only a mother can love. Well, maybe. Number 11. The Venezuelan Poodle Moth Did anyone else just picture a tiny little poodle flying around with moth wings? Because I know that I did. <laughs> and in my head, I laughed really hard. The Venezuelan Poodle Moth is not a dog, however, but actually a moth and it actually looks like a fairy. Little and fluffy, it would also totally fit in on Avatar, or like some kind of really freaky fairy movie. I kind of want one as a pet. The first photo of this interesting looking thing would be taken in 2009, and that's when it was confirmed to be very real by the person who took it, which is a weird kind of self-affirming thing. Only because I really hope that the moth is actually real. Their big eyes are able to follow your movements, which must be very creepy if you're standing face to face with one. And obviously, because it was the first photo of such an obscure and never before seen insect, there's not really a whole lot of information on it, other than how cute it looks. I think we can come up with a better name than Poodle Moth though, right? Leave your comments below as to what you would call it. Number 10, the Brazilian Tree Hopper. For this one, I am speechless. Just kidding, I have to keep talking. This is by far one of the strangest looking living things I've ever laid my eyes on, and we're not even halfway through our list. I'm curious as what lies ahead. But for now, this thing is just miraculous. Now granted, there are over 900,000 different kinds of insects in the world. There are bound to be some that are just a big WTF. But this one? The tree hoppers are relatives to cicadas and their disgusting features, which is obviously what this weird looking thing is on its head, because it's not antenna. It is in reality a sort of ornamental part of the insect. The helmet looking bulbs can come in a variety of shapes and sizes depending on the insect's surroundings and how they've adapted to them. One of the reasons that scientists speculate is that the little bulbs are either in fact antenna or they might somehow deter predators. Whatever grand design God had for this one, I'm sure he took some creative liberties because I really have no idea what to make of the tiny little bug. Number nine, the blue dragon. Speaking of the movie Avatar, this little sea creature definitely belongs on Pandora, somewhere. Also known as the blue dragon, sea swallow, or blue angel, the blue glaucus can be found throughout the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian oceans in tropical waters. Even though it does kind of look like some kind of fish, the blue dragon is indeed a slug. So this is the prettiest slug that anyone's ever seen. Like other animals of its species, the blue dragon is actually a venomous beauty. So if you ever cross one, don't be entranced into touching it. Just leave it the heck alone. The reason the slug's floating around and not sliding on the ground is because in its stomach there's a little bubble of air that makes it stay afloat. This helps with its movement around the seafloor and offers many advantages when hunting or searching for other kinds of food. But you want to know something super weird that they do with their prey? Blue dragons lay eggs on their prey's carcasses, or really any other floating thing for that matter. So they think, I'm going to eat you, then lay my eggs on you. If someone threatened me like that, I would for sure run away. Number 8. The Giant Isopod Look at this mamma jamma. This thing is a tank of an animal, and in fact, the largest crustacean in the seven seas. 
Scientists believe that these isopods got so big in fact because of the enormous amount of pressure that they experience being so deep under the ocean. They've evolved to become bigger and to adapt. The giant isopods also related to more landbound crustaceans such as the pill bug which is known as the roly-poly. The enormous size of the giant isopod is a result of a deep sea gigantism, which is when an animal that lives deep in the sea grows to a much larger size than a similar species in shallow waters. These things can grow anywhere between 19 and 36 centimeters in length, living at depths that range from 500 to 2,000 feet below the sea level. I just wonder how things aren't crushed under so much pressure. Number 7. Cereal Leaf Beetle So when you look at the cereal leaf beetle, you may think, oh, that's kind of cool. But then you see a pregnant one of these things, and it literally gives you goosebumps. They have translucent skin, and you can see the larva on the inside. Ew! Though, not only are these things super nasty, they can also be quite destructive. They're called cereal leaf beetles because they eat and also lay their larva on a host of different crops on many different farmlands. This causes a widespread loss of crops if left untreated, and it's not only the adults that do the damage. The larva also contributes to the destruction of whatever crop it ends up on. One of the ways to combat the little douchebags is of course pesticide, though I'm fairly certain that people don't really want to be consuming that. During the spring, there are wasps that come about and begin picking off the leaf beetles. So I guess they're kind of cool in that end. Wasps just kind of suck though, so either way, farmers are kind of screwed. Number 6. The Blobfish Oh great, we have another blob looking thing on our list. Let's see here, uh, oh my gosh, that is vomit inducingly not cool. This is a fish that's widely considered not only to be the ugliest fish, but actually the ugliest animal in the entire animal kingdom. Maybe he's a nice guy though, right? Well, apparently people had actually voted on what the ugliest fish was, and I thought that a bunch of scientists had gotten together and scientifically chose it. That would have been amazing. These little weirdos live off the coast of Australia, somewhere between 2,000 and 4,000 feet beneath the waves. Down in those dark depths where the pressure is 120 times greater than on land. That may account for their smooshed up old man looking face. Normally, fish have a kind of sac that helps them to adapt to undersea pressure, but the blobfish, well, they don't have that. So they just look like moist, smooshed up old men. I'm sorry, blobfish, but you're just ugly. Number five, the star nosed mole. Another thing on the list that looks like some kind of alien that happened to fall to earth, the star-nosed mole really has a fascinating lifestyle. Then over the course of 30 years, scientists have begun to study these creatures. They've gotten a lot of information about them, so let's look at some of the cooler facts. First things first, what's with the star nose? Well, the star-nosed mole is a mole, it burrows underground, and it's completely blind. In order to properly navigate those tunnels, the star-nosed mole uses the little end of its star nose to feel its way through. Each little tentacle has 100,000 nerve fibers that send information to the mole's brain. That's five times more touch sensors than in the human hand. It's even more impressive knowing that the tip of the mole's nose is no bigger than a fingertip. So, as ugly as the mole's nose may be, it really does pack a wallop in the usefulness department and makes up for its strangeness, at least in my humble opinion. Number four, the red-lipped batfish. Ooh, how very chic of this batfish. Looks like it's going out for a night on the town with the girls. I can't not imagine what the use for such red lips could possibly be for the animal, and it's hilarious how much they do look like real lips. The red-lipped batfish is most commonly found around the deep waters of the Galapagos Islands, making out with all the other fish, I'm sure. You go, girlfriend! 
But seriously though, these batfish do live in very deep waters, and like most other fish that live in the deep, they're carnivorous. So instead of making out, I think the fish is probably eating other fish. In order to attract and get their prey, these fish use a modified dorsal spine as a lure. Now the maximum length of the red-lipped batfish that was ever recorded came out to about 40 centimeters long. So these fish are not really all that big or scary, it's just all about those lips. You gotta love them. It would be awesome to know why their lips are so red, but as of now, scientists are still trying to figure it out. Number three, the gorill. Now when you look at this animal and you cover up its snout, it looks like it's about to be a crocodile. But then you move your hand and it's like, oh my gosh, what happened? I shouldn't joke about it though, they're very, very close to extinction. And just take a wild guess at who caused it. That's right, humans did. A round of applause for humans killing everything. Politics aside, these animals did used to be quite widespread throughout the swamps and watery lands of India, and for the record, they're a type of crocodile. Its snout is much smaller because of the fish that it actually eats. These things were long considered to be the sole remaining member of a certain species, but recent evidence also places another species, the false gorille, in the family. Gorilles last shared a common ancestor with the false gorille in what scientists believe to be about 20 million years ago. However, some believe that they actually separated from all other crocodilians about more than 40 million years ago. And then again, scientists also believe that we last shared a common ancestor with a squirrel monkey. Number two, the Dumbo octopus. Now we're back to some cute little animals that are at the same time very strange and also unearthly looking. These octopuses are kind of like that all the time though. The little cuties live very, very deep in the darkest depths of the ocean, about 13,000 feet into them to be exact, sometimes even deeper, though scientists have not yet been able to observe this. It's just a hypothesis. This makes the Dumbo octopus the octopus that lives deepest within the oceans. The Dumbo octopus is indeed named after a well-known Disney character. They've given this octopus the name because of the tentacles that remind them of Dumbo's ears. And these are some pretty big octopuses as well, with the biggest one coming in at a measurement of 5 feet 10 inches tip to tip. That's almost as tall as me. Because it never really encounters any predators in this deep ocean, the Dumbo octopus never developed the need for an ink sack, and therefore it doesn't have one. Because I was totally going to see if I could find one as a pet somewhere. I'm just kidding. Or am I? Number 1. The Yeti Crab And now here we are, the well-awaited moment of our number one spot. We have the Yeti Crab. Because of its hairy legs, this animal would be nicknamed the Yeti Crab after the much more famous Yeti, which does totally exist. Judging from those fuzzy legs, I believe that scientists nailed it. They look like little Yeti arms. First discovered on a deep sea dive in 2005 in the very biologically rich areas that surround hydrothermal vents deep within the sea not far from Easter Island, scientists are not 100% sure exactly how this crab fits into the thermal vent system, though it's not for lack of trying. I can't help but wonder what kind of texture those yeti arms have. I bet they're just fuzzy like fuzzy wuzzy. But then again, nature does have a nasty way of surprising you, so I just may throw this animal on my do not touch list and move on with my life. There are so many animals on the planet that really seem like living things that are not from this world. And for all of you who think that the world has no more magic left within it, just pick up an Encyclopedia Britannica or watch some of our videos to see some more crazy things about the Earth. Which of these unique animals would you say is the most crazy or unique of them all? Let us know in the comments below. Check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.